Good morning. Hey, where is mercy for Edom? Our reading today is at Jeremiah chapter 49, verses 7 to 13. And here we go. Against Edom, thus says the Lord of hosts, is wisdom no more in Timon? Has counsel perished from the prudent? Has their wisdom vanished? Flee, turn back, dwell in the depths, O inhabitants of Dedan, for I will bring the calamity of Esau upon him, the time that I will punish him. If grape gatherers came to you, would they not leave some gleaning grapes? If thieves by night, would they not destroy until they have enough? But I have made Esau bare. I have uncovered his secret places, and he shall not be able to hide himself. His descendants are plundered, his brethren and his neighbors, and he is no more. Leave your fatherless children, I will preserve them alive, and let your widows trust in me. For thus says the Lord, Behold, those whose judgment was not to drink of the cup have assuredly drunk. And are you the one who will altogether go unpunished? You shall not go unpunished, but you shall surely drink of it. For I have sworn by myself, says the Lord, that Bozrah shall become a desolation, a reproach, a waste, and a curse, and all its cities shall be perpetual wastes. We just saw these past two mornings God's mercies with the Moabites and the Ammonites. But this passage says that Edom will be stripped bare. Nothing will be left. What's going on? Is God arbitrarily merciful to the Moabites, but he's being totally harsh with the Edomites? Is there something wrong here? Well, don't forget the history. Remember, God delivered his people from Egyptian bondage. He got them across the Red Sea miraculously. He brought them out there to come into the promised land. And what happened? They sought passage through Edom. You can read about it in Numbers chapter 20. The king of Edom and the Edomites re absolutely refused to let them go through. They asked very graciously. They weren't asking for anything but just safe passage. But they absolutely, utterly refused. Edom was that way towards God's people. See, they showed no mercy, and now they will receive no mercy. Keep in mind also that salvation is always also an individual matter. God sets up nations and takes them down, but on an individual basis, people can be saved or lost. You know, their choices will determine what they do. Salvation is always an individual matter. No one's lost because they happen to grow up in Babylon or Edom. With the merciful, God shows himself merciful. And God even tells the Edomites right here, I'll take care of your orphans. I'll take care of the children. I'll take care of the widows. So there's some of God's mercy on display as well. But Edom, Edom did the wrong thing way back there. And now this is the result. We'll look at some more of this in our next passage tomorrow where we finish with the Edomites. Let's pray. Dear Father in heaven, we want to be right. We want to be merciful. We see you're being merciful, even though you also were carrying out your purposes as well with some people who are relentless and absolutely refuse to work with you. So thank you, Lord, for hearing our requests that you would be with us, work with us, and work with us just as you worked with those Edomites who were willing to be worked with. But Lord, you set up kingdoms and you take them down. And so, Lord, that is your business. Help us to be right, right in our hearts with your heart. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. God has enormous mercy for the Edomites as individuals, and he has great mercy for you and I as individuals too. God be with you today.